Okay, let me actually use the camera here in my bracket. Sorry about that. So how about the uh, double slit experiment in relationship to the uh, supercell here? First, let me stick on a little broken ring magnet since this one isn't so potent on uh, burning in a nasty image. And zoom in a little further. Of course, we see constructive and destructive interference patterns between the lights and where the light is not present. Everywhere we see light is what we're seeing is a uh, construct of, of the magnetism actually causing the light, which is, of course, itself electromagnetic with the longitudinal dielectric pulse perturbation of the dielectric, a coaxial circuit of electrical, magnetic, and dielectric that actually makes up electromagnetic radiation or light. But there's no difference, and I'm going to explain that here, trying to explain it really, really simply, between what the uh, we see in the double slit experiment and what we actually see here underneath the... Uh, the supercell with uh, the light. We just have actually a string of LED lights that are actually shooting through optically flat glass with basically a quarter drop of liquid. You put four drops of liquid, but once you sandwich the glass, you've ultimately only got about um, less than a quarter drop of liquid because it all squirts out the edges. Here you can actually see on this uh, broken ring magnet where the pieces are conjoined, we actually have this S pattern on the magnets and also too type of S pattern on the field pressure mediation between the two. Let me actually place it underneath the ferro cell and uh, see it'll be easier to talk about here. Here we can actually see the magnetic lines of a convergent centrifugal force in motion. And here, of course, we see the points of uh, entry of dielectric inertia and acceleration towards the plane of inertia, the null point in counter space, what we would actually call metaphysically and also logically and empirically is nothing other than uh, point non-specific or non-Cartesian, i.e. non-empirical, because everything that actually gives volume and space and time to what we uh, have a concept to of the empirical universe is solely due to magnetism. This absence of light, of course, is where there is no construct or destructive interference. We see no lines here. Of course, this broken ring magnet is not the best example. Let me actually use a powerful little magnet here and I move it around. Here we can, of course, see, let me actually do a focus. There we go. Do a little bit of a focus here. I'm going to move it around so it doesn't burn in the pattern on the, uh, the cell so bad. The constructive destructive lines of interference, of course, these lines are curved linear, but there's no difference between this and the uh, double slit experiment. We actually, you can actually duplicate that using a single needle. Um, of a constructive and destructive interference, we actually set up a phase. When you set up a spatial phase, then we actually have interference and becomes constructive and destructive. It doesn't matter if it's a double slit experiment or the single needle experiment using uh, light. And of course, the fallacy in the double slit experiment, which I've made quite a few videos on, is the notion that light is being emitted by something which is not. The notion that light is traveling from point A to point B is not. It's an ether perturbation. It's a perturbation of the very medium itself. This phase discrepancy sets up, of course, constructive and destructive interference. What we're actually seeing is, according to modern ignorant and idiotic physics and uh, understanding of magnetism, what we're looking at the magnetic field above or below this uh, ferro cell here, and that's not the case. The reason why we don't actually have a light bubble or an absence of light, we actually have these constructive and destructive interference lines exactly like that that we see and evidenced by the double slit experiment, is we have the conjugate geometry of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, or respectively, the toroidal field of and this, of course, in this case, the magnet itself is toroidal, but it doesn't matter if I use a ring magnet or a regular solid, solid magnet. We're looking at the toroidal field of, uh, the, uh, of magnetism itself, the centrifugal force in motion, divergence, and uh, the hyperboloidal geometry, which is an hourglass shape of increasing inertia and acceleration to non-Cartesian plane of inertia, i.e. counter space. You see this little dark spot right here at the center of this? Okay, right here. You see that? Now, there's nothing here. 
you think, well, this magnet's emitting a magnetic field. This magnet's no more emitting a magnetic field than a light bulb is emitting light. What we actually have here is a field disturbance and pressure mediation that is mediated out through the respective geometries. And of course, in the case of magnetism, in this case of the magnet, we're looking at the conjugate fields of magnetism and dielectricity. The field pressures, which of course are mutually mediating out their own pressures of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, centrifugal divergence, and centripetal convergence. If you actually look here at the center, I know you can't see it with the proper camera view that I have right now. You'll actually see a, uh, it looks like a ball of yarn in the center with, of course, a little tiny black dot right there, which actually drops to the plane of inertia, the null point of non-Cartesian uh, inertia and acceleration in the dielectric and counter space. Um, let me quote Do Eric Dollard here for you in a second. Uh, certainly the grumpiest man on earth, but a person that understands field theory better than you or anybody else alive. And let me quote him for you. You can have absolutely no comprehension of electrical theory without a comprehension of counter space. It's absolutely impossible. In other words, without a comprehension of the fundamentals of what counter space is, it's impossible to understand uh, field theory or electrical theory. Of course, there's no difference between field theory and electrical theory. Electricity is nothing other than a hybrid of dielectricity and electricity. Phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification, which is electricity. And Eric Dollard, this quote didn't belong to him on uh, what uh, electricity is. That actually came from uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz's uh, first book. Um, I'm trying to remember which book. He's got ten main books. I'm trying to remember which one it is. It escapes me right now. But these constructive and destructive lines are no different than the double slit experiment, where we actually have a phase variance, in this case, geomagnetic precession. You have to also understand what the Poincaré disk model of projective geometry is, because we actually have contracting and expanding loops of force and motion that define magnetism that are circumambulating the actual physical mass. And of course, this is also called the Lamour frequency. You can look it up. This, uh, to calibrate that frequency is necessary for calibrating uh, uh, magnetic resonance imaging machines to get the Lamour frequency correct for correct calibration and the po best possible clear image from an MRI machine. This is literally geromagnetic precession. Actually, understanding what geomagnetic precession is is seemingly complicated, but it's actually very, very simplex. It's no different than the precession of the Earth or precession of a top. But uh, these constructive and destructive lines, of course, is burning an image in on my supercell here. This is why I taped the supercell together, of course, so I'd have to take it apart because this uh, very powerful N55 gauss magnet would destroy it. But everywhere you see light here, you see magnetism. Everywhere you see the absence of light, we actually have uh, destructive interference, i.e. the dielectric. And of course, right here, we have no lines at all. Why do you think we have no lines here? Because this is the very dead center of the magnet. This is increasing inertia and acceleration to counter space at the plane of inertia. All this light is magnetism. Everywhere there's an absence of light. We have a lot of lights here. We've got about 13 uh, bright white uh, LEDs just shooting dead center in. It's incoherent radiation from LED. However, it is point source uh, emission, but I've used, uh, created the supercells using single point source like the sun. I created a solar supercell. I have got a video for that. You can take a look at it. But all these lines of interference are just constructive and destructive uh, patterns that you see also too in the uh, double slit experiment. There's absolutely no difference. And the point is, and the really important point, and people don't seem to be able to wrap their mind around this, is that we're looking at a powerful magnet like this. Well, what's around a powerful magnet? Oh, we got a powerful magnetic field around this magnet. And what we're looking at here is the magnetic lines of us underneath this magnetic viewing device, which I've never seen before. It's a fantastic little invention. No, we're not. We're looking at, the reason why the lines are here, God damn it is because we're not just looking at magnetism. We're looking at the conjugate geometries of the hyperboloid and the toroid of the competing, or you can say the battling. Of course, battling is incorrect because one is just a mirror image of the other. The inverse image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The inverse image of a, of a hyperboloid is a torus. This is the yin and yang, the conjugate geometry, the Siamese twins of the entire universe. The only reason why there are lines here is because we're not just looking at magnetism, damn it. We're looking at dielectricity and magnetism. The reason why we're seeing these curved linear patterns is due to geomagnetic precession of Lamour frequency. We're looking at the interplay between the torus and the hyperboloid of force of motion, inertia, and acceleration in this point source emission that we call a magnet. The only thing that defines a magnet 
is field coherency, but once again, field coherency is incorrect. What we're looking at is point source emanation because it's not correct simply to say field coherency. Attributionally, it's correct, but inherently, it's incorrect. But this is no different than what we see in the, the double slit experiment, these constructive and destructive lines. You're not simply looking at magnetism. If you can get anything out of this video, you need to understand that. We're looking at the fight, the interplay between dielectricity and magnetism. I hope you like this video. If you do, you please click the link below. Let me know what I could do to help you, and uh, thank you so much for watching, okay? Lux Everitas, and thanks uh, for watching. Bye.